Now, a member of the House of Representatives representing Ohuku Ebony Federal Constituency, Linus Okori, has sponsored a bill seeking to grant amnesty to former public officers who have looted Nigeria's treasury, but are willing to invest their loots in the country's economy. Now, according to the proposed legislation, from the date of the commencement of the amnesty scheme, Nigerians will ill with ill-gotten wealth, including looted funds stashed abroad, are expected to voluntarily declare them before the Central Bank of Nigeria. And after the declaration, 30% of the declared, declared sum will be paid as tax into the Federation account for distribution to the three tiers of government. While, now, while a 25% yeah. surcharge on the tax will be deplo uh, deployed uh, towards agricultural and infrastructural developments in the country. Well, our guest in the studio is uh, Fred Nzako, is a lawyer. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining us. Many thanks. Sir. Nice good to morning. have you joining us. Is there anything wrong with this suggestion? Everything uh, is wrong with it. Okay. Uh, everything. <laughs> everything is wrong with it. It's a mockery, total mockery of the word amnesty. Is a total bastardization of the process of granting legitimate pardon to a legitimate cause. And um, you can only grant amnesty where it is necessary. The whole essence of law and um, punishment is, is for deterrent. I wonder what this law seeks to achieve. Does it deter people from looting the treasury or does it encourage them? So I see it as a pure legitimization of looting, as a pure legalization of criminality, especially to respect to public treasury. Mm. So the law should not see the light of the day. All right, but in a situation where the House is even making a consideration to even talk about it and even debate it as the case may be where it is going through the first reading, what kind of perception does it build around the house when people talk about lawmaking in Nigeria yes. and even for Nigerians themselves what, what, the whole because when they, when they talk about the hallowed chamber and all of yes. that they they are all a collection of of, of our representative who are yes. supposed to be hallowed yes so what, what kind of perception does that bring out perception of unhallowedness of the hallowed chamber perception of lack of seriousness perception of detachment of the legislators from the people perception mm of lack of the requirement of the Nigerian nation as are today. There are so many laws yearning for attention of the legislature. And then it beats anybody's imagination that legislature would, in spite of all these yearning gaps, in spite of all these yearning requirements for them to make laws for the good governance of the country, they are busy thinking and wasting precious legislative time on laws that are self-serving on laws that are not in any way in tune with the realities of the now. Now, what about the argument that if this law were in place, yes. it, it will save Nigeria the, the cost of pursuing these looters, uh, you know, and there's really no guarantee that uh, government will win in every case. So you no. might as well, uh, you know, try as much as possible to get as much as you can back into the public till because after all nigeria is in a recession and yes. then again maybe looking back the the society that we've had all this while has actually permitted such looting and maybe going forward it will change when you say society has permitted such looting i don't agree to that mm. because no sane society will permit looting it's just that the society sometimes is handicapped mm. by reason of inappropriate laws that will cage and pull down looters. So it is expected by the society. That is it the, inappropriate that the, laws or the unwillingness the, to actually the, apply the laws? Sometimes the inappropriate laws. Sometimes. Okay. And that it, it should worry the legislature that what is wrong with our system? Why are we not catching every looter? That should be their worry. And then they now sit down from their own side as the legislative house. Is there any law that can be crafted that will make the system so watertight that no looter will go scot-free. Mm -hmm. So that by the time they do the, discharge their own responsibility, they now, now know that the rest is left to the executive mm -hmm. to implement. And then they will also have to worry about the judicial system. If the judicial system in any way is 
is it, the, the activities in the judiciary or the, the procedures in the judiciary, if it is any way affecting the process of ensuring that looters are caught and apprehended and adequately punished, then it is their responsibility to also look at those laws. The Administration of Criminal Justice Act of 2015, a robust law that has taken care of most of the challenges we had in the past. But even as good as that law is, the implementation is still some, some, some task. In that law, there is a provision for plea bargain. Even that provision for plea bargain is being challenged by some people, mm -hmm. by some scholars, that it shouldn't be there in the first instance. But it was there because of the frustration attendant to the process of recovery of loot. Mm -hmm. Now, if you now begin to talk about amnesty, that means you have even gone beyond plea bargain. You are now granting legislative pardon to criminals. Mm -hmm. We must say the way it is. Anybody who loses the treasury is a criminal. If that person is just caught or not, the person himself or herself must know, deep down in himself or herself, as a conscientious human being imbued with integrity of God, that the person has looted treasury and the person has committed crime. All right. Now it is left for the society to yeah. grab such person mm. and adequately punish the person. All right. You, you talked about the frust the kind of frustration that, yes. uh, that 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 is inherent in the system sometimes that hamper this fight against corruption. Yes. Now every corrupt situation. Finding evidence is not, of, or, or, or tracing where these monies are found is not even as technical as the issue of the, the legal system of whether you are, the evidence is strong enough to pitch this person against this crime as the case may be. Yeah. So it falls down back on the table of the judiciary. Aren't the judiciary or maybe so many lawyers culpable in, this, in, in taking advantage, seeing loopholes where they can manipulate the system and ensure that uh, looters and criminals, the way you put it, I go scot-free. Mm. There is a saying in law, there is, um, there is a saying in law that, um, well, at, uh, as, uh, as funny as it may sound, mm. but it, it happens that somebody may tr strive not to be the master of the law, but the master of its loopholes. Mm. That we may not be the master of the law, but a good lawyer may be the master of its loopholes. Those loopholes, it is the duty of the legislature to plug them. And that is where I expect the National Assembly to be thinking. How do we plug these loopholes? So that the lawyers who are masters of the loopholes will have no loophole to master. And in that case, they will now face the nitty gritty of the issue. And then we secure conviction where we should secure conviction. If the problem is with the Evidence Act, because everything is with the Act. If you make the law, now you now bring down to the judiciary for interpretation. The judiciary cannot interpret what law that is not on ground. That is why the three arms of government, yes, are separate, but are intertwined, mm -hmm. interrelated, and then interconnected in a way as to cooperate towards the good of the society. So if in implementing a particular law, experience has shown that there is a loophole, it is the duty of the legislature to plug that loophole. And those loopholes seem to have led over time uh, to the failure of prosecution, to a large one after the other. To a large extent, yes. the lawyer has a duty, mm -hmm. first, to the justice system, two, to his client, and three, to the society. Mm. The order may change. Shouldn't some, society some, come first? That's why I say the order may change. Okay. Some people will tell you, first, to the society, second, to, this, to justice, and third, to the client. But anyhow you look at it, the protection of the lawyer's client features prominently in his duty and responsibility. And that is why if a lawyer does not adequately represent his client, he's even chastised by the judicial system that mm -hmm. you have to adequately represent your client so that the justice of the case will be heard. And then justice will not only be seen to be done, mm -hmm. but manifestly be done. But at the end of the day, how, is, how does it affect the society? And that that's, is usually the, that's the point. Okay. Now, yes. in, in, in coming up with this bill, the yes. same uh, sponsor says, or well, some, some have actually suggested that if this amnesty bill does go through, that, you know, that sh it should come with some conditions. For example, barring this, uh, you know, public officers yes. from coming anywhere near public office within a space of 10 years. Okay. Is, is that strong enough? 
if, if you want to keep an open mind and understand the other side mm. and then try to at least you know, for, for all it's worth try to look at maybe whether there's any benefit whatsoever mm. from this proposed bill part of the benefit the proponents are pushing mm -hmm. is that it will save the government some stress of prosecution and then because prosecution usually does not end in favor of the government you had rightly mm -hmm. earlier said that out. and then secondly that it it, it it is time bound because they said they are proposing it for just three years mm -hmm. maybe bearing in mind the recession we are into but then the question is what caused the recession in the first mm -hmm. place in the first instance mm -hmm. naturally the leaders caused the recession at all levels so they should intuitively and intrinsically think deeply how to get out of this recession and not to bastardize our existing laws. All right. If we have to, lawmakers are representatives of their constituents. Yes. In coming up with laws like this, do they really make consultation with their constituents as regarding whether few people mm -hmm. like this or, or, or is it their discretion, within their discretion to say, okay, I'm doing this on our behalf, on Thank the you. behalf of others. Thank mm, you so very mm, much. It mm. simply shows, I earlier said, that the lawmakers are terribly and unfortunately detached from the people. If they consulted the people, naturally, they wouldn't have stood up in the chambers to begin to push this law. Because no person being represented would want his representative, either at the legislature or his official in government at the executive level, to loot the common world that belongs to everybody, mm. and then get amnesty at the end of the day. Nobody will want to support So it doesn't that. make sense so, to you that if, if we get back all of this loot, or most of it, and plow back you know, into agriculture, infrastructure, mm. and all of and that, yeah. it, almost seems, it almost seems that uh, Linus Okori, the sponsor of yeah. this bill, <laughs> uh, is comparing the lawmakers with uh, Robin Hood. Who would steal from the rich and give, and to, then the I guess, and give to the poor? <laughs> I, guess, I guess that may have occurred to him. But um, at the end of the day, we are talking about law. Mm. We are talking about law. If the law is not knitted in a way as to protect the integrity of the society, mm. it will achieve nothing. Mm. Absolutely, achieve, absolutely achieve nothing. So now we have a, a, a case where an EFCC chairman is refused confirmation, confirmation by the lawmakers at the upper chambers. And then, as, as late as just yesterday, there was an issue between the executive and, mm -hmm. the, legislature and the legislature in that regard. Mm -hmm. so, so what does that tell you? It tells you that there is this doctrine of self-preservation among the leaders in Nigeria, which is a very terrible one. The legislature feel, oh, this one, this one is against us. The executive at one point will say, oh, this is against us. And that is why you even see such incidences, even snowball, down to the issue of budgeting. Mm -hmm. But where the majority of the leaders think the people, I do not think most of these issues will still be. And there's paramount. a latest development where there's a demand for an outright publication or publishing of the names of looters. A, 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 and how a, much a, they have looted and all of that. And I'm, and I'm wondering, <laughs> yes. because if you are a good student of Nigerian history, yes. we've been talking about corruption way, way back. Way back in time. Mm -hmm. yes. Since and we'll continue to talk about it how far till should, kingdom come. How far should the names of this of this looters, you know, go? I think to independence? Of, yes. I think, the, I think the, oh. the, 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 the thinking of the court when the learned judge, Justice Shagari, gave that mm -hmm. order, you know, asking that the government has the, uh, is giving the authority to publish the names of, um, uh, of looters, the whole idea is to name and okay. shame. Mm. And, but the, the, the challenge we have is to what extent will that achieve result in our environment where people are clapping for criminals? If, because when anybody loots a treasury and then he comes out to flaunt that loot mm. and then people don't ask questions is a worrisome development you recall there was a time when ba central bank gave, gave orders to banks to publish names of debtors mm. what did they achieve at the end of the day that's the problem all right uh, uh fred and zerko thank you very much for coming on the program this many, morning many thank, thank you so, so much. much many thanks right.